So it's our full moon, Uposata day, full moon of August, and uh, And we're two weeks into the Vasa period, the rainy season. Rainy season in in India, of course, but uh, it's a uh, traditional period of retreat time, and from, stemming from the time of the Buddha. And. Uh, One of the things uh, we do here during the, the Vasa period is have uh, um, each of the members of the community uh, take a couple weeks of solitude uh, so that uh, this next two weeks I'll be, I get the opportunity to be in solitude and uh, I always look forward to that time. And I find that uh, um, period of uh, stepping back and um, having a, yeah, a period of retreat is uh, is a, a a good way to kind of renew or review or reinvigorate um, the uh, the practice um, uh, stepping back from you know, say correspondence duties uh, engagement in regular ways it isn't we're not you know, we don't really do complete and utter solitude um, but uh, you know, stepping back um, is is really fruitful and that's something that um, say whether as a monastic or as a lay person uh, you know, it's 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 good to take periods of time to to step back, uh, and uh, and even and on a certain level, even they say for the lay people coming to the monastery is an opportunity to step back from the uh, uh, ordinary, regular engagement <coughs> in the world with uh, family duties, um, whatnot. Uh, so, however, one. Um, however it works for one, uh, yeah, it's helpful to uh, to step back and have periods of, uh, of, of retreat time. So it's, it's um, just the nature of the mind we tend to get, well you get used to everything um, and things become Ordinary, or you just become inured to whatever experience one one is doing, and that happens whether one's in a monastery or or in the world. It's uh, it's, it's what the uh, it's what the mind does. Um, of course, it's uh, it's not it's not a, a good part of the mind, but it uh, uh, we just have to be aware of that. Uh, and be uh, finding ways to skillfully uh, reflect and investigate so that we're, we're able to bring a freshness to, to the mind. And, and, and certainly I've always found that uh, stepping back and, and, uh, and doing a periods of retreat are a good way of, of uh, you know, reinvigorating practice. Uh, so it's uh, be uh, having that opportunity. 
But whether we're, say, whether we're in retreat or not in retreat, um, there's, uh, the, the, uh, you know, what we contemplate or what we practice with uh, is really not, it's really not all that different. Um, there's a, uh, and there's an idiom that comes up in the suttas over and over again, so the, the lawfulness of the Dhamma. Uh, I think in Pali, Dhamma Niyamata. So yeah, it's just this, this lawfulness of the Dhamma, the regularity of the Dhamma. Um, uh, it, it, the, the Dhamma works in these ways. Um, the, uh, um, you do certain things and they bring certain results. Um, you, 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 so that, uh, um, and, and uh, the mind, the, the heart responds to certain things. It's just, it's, it's just so much more satisfying to be, you know, to be, to be happy, to be peaceful, to be clear, to be steady. And it's just as a, uh, that's the way it, it works, even though sometimes, uh, say, distraction and, and uh, uh, excitement can be compelling, um, and yeah, it ends up not being very satisfying. Uh, so the uh, the, the the inclination to cultivating that which is peaceful, that which is clear, steady, solid. And it's really important because that's it's just the way uh, the universe is configured. This lawfulness of the Dhamma. The uh, uh, one of the places that idiom comes up is uh, 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 it's toward the end of the Buddha's life, because uh, it's, it's in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta. But the uh, um, Sariputta makes this sort of very bold statement that uh, uh, there's. Uh, he just uh, he just has such this tremendous faith in the in the Buddha that there's uh, there's never been uh, in the past and um, won't be in the future never is in the present you know anybody is as uh, uh, fully awakened fully enlightened fully realized uh, as the Buddha and uh, and the Buddha. Uh, in his his kind of uh, uh, circumspect manner, very kind of wry observation, says, "Oh, sorry, put them. Do you, well, do you <laughs> do you actually know the 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 the, the, the virtue, the, the the meditation, the awakening, realization uh, of uh, of of the Buddhas of the past? Uh, do you actually know the?" the the, 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 these qualities of Buddhas in the future, or do you even know those qualities of the Buddha in this present? And of course, Sarpa is well, no, not really. <laughs> but, but, he said, I understand the lawfulness of the Dhamma, that if one is going to experience this, that kind of uh, virtue, that purity, that, that peace, that wisdom, that, uh, uh, those realizations, uh, it has to be through the, the, uh, the relinquishing of the five hindrances, the establishing of the four foundations of mindfulness, uh, the 
that cultivation of the seven factors of awakening, that's, um, it has to be in that doorway. Uh, that is the, uh, the way uh, to the Dhamma. There is this lawfulness of the Dhamma. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and sorry, Putti gives a, an image of uh, that. The, uh, in the same way that, uh, uh, say, an ancient city would, would have a city wall going around it, and if it had uh, the, the watchman, the head watchman would um, go around that, the, the, those walls, those ramparts, and, and be check them, recheck them, and know that there's only this one gate uh, coming in. And it, uh, um, in the same way that that's, if somebody comes and you let in the, the, the good people, you turn away the enemies. And, and uh, in the same way that if someone is going to enter this Dhamma, these realizations, these these qualities of the Tathagata, uh, it's awakening. This is the way, it's, it's the, that's the only way in. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful image. And then that, that, that theme there, there is this lawfulness of the Dhamma. Um, the, the Dhamma functions in this way, the, the, kind of, sorry, the component pieces of realizing the Dhamma, realizing the fruits of it, realizing the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, experience uh, of the Dhamma, so the uh, relinquishing of the five hindrances, establishing the four foundations of mindfulness, cultivating the seven factors of awakening. So these are, <coughs> you know, on a certain level, it's just the, uh, uh, it's just like, almost like Buddhism 101. Uh, but it, uh, um, and you realize it has major implications and to, uh, uh, to lay those foundation, be attentive and, and, and be assiduous in, uh, in the cultivation. Uh, of these 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 fundamentals of of the practice, uh, and so that and 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 that's a you know it's kind of a it, it it is an element of of right view as well. Uh, in that, you know, you know, part of the kind of delusions that we get caught up in, um, you know, it, it, is that somehow if I you know, just heard the right teaching or just met the right teacher or I just uh, was in the, in the right, con absolute right conditions, um, uh, then somehow I'd, 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 I'd realize Dhamma. Uh, and and it, and it isn't as if those don't have a place, uh, but it, the, it, it, I say this lawfulness of the dhamma is such that we have to have the these 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 fundamentals of the of the practice and the implementation the living of the of the dhamma in order to. To truly realize, and that, so that's this, 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 you know, paying attention to, to right view. Um, it's like remember Ajahn Chah talking about practice, and of course he encouraged. Um, you know, practice a lot. Uh, um, eat little, sleep little, speak little, practice a lot. 
And this is like a mantra that you kept that I heard as, as a young monk. It a, put a lot of effort into the practice, but but the but it also it always be couched in or held by uh, these aspects of right view, and uh, that um, you, you you put the effort in to the practice, but you also pay attention to to uh, the quality of of uncertainty of changefulness of anicca uncertainty unsure uh, uh, impermanent um, things are subject to change um, and that that uh, uh, being able to cut through because you know everything you know when we experience something that we like, uh, you know, it seems so real, uh, and we in, invest our kind of emotion and perspective. Oh, uh, I just got there what I like, and you know, everything should be fine. And these things that I experience that I dislike, if I just got rid of that, then everything would be fine. Uh, or things we, the views and opinions that we hold of what, you know, what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, then, and, and we, we don't look at it through, we look at it through that lens of, of, of that side of experience, but we don't frame it in the frame of yeah, of change, of changefulness, of unsure. Uh, and Jen Chao used to, I mean, in Thai, I would say, my uh, yeah, nan, not a sure thing. Um, but, and, and as long as we don't really fully accept that uncertainty, uh, then, you know, we're stuck in, in wrong view. Uh, and the, and it isn't just repeating it over and over again. It's right, really bringing it into the heart and and realizing, oh, I can't I can't invest in this. This is not really worth uh, believing in. It's not worth uh, uh, you know, staking my my claim. Uh, uh, to this, so it's it's a, uh, and of course, and when we think of of anicca or not unsure changefulness, um, you know, it's part of the 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 the, the uh, uh, what what the Buddha points to as universal characteristics. Uh, the anicca dukkha anatta. Uh, Impermanence, uh, dukkha, the the unsatisfactory, the uh, the uh, stressful suffering, and and the aspect of not self. This is not not what I truly am. This is not my essence. Um, this aspect of experience is and that. Uh, that lawfulness of the Dhamma says it's going to change. Uh, and, and so there's this this uh, right view. So one, well, one of the thing I was called right view there's this was it Majima one seventeen, the, the discourse on the Great Forty, uh, where Right view leads, uh, and then it circles around right effort and right mindfulness. And those those aspects of uh, the, these three circle around each other. And right view is, but but right view comes first, um, and 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 of course it it gets built and layered and, and 
clarified um, that that right view, right effort, right mindfulness, and, and it are they just making sure we're circling around us. So in practice, uh, keeping the the uh, uh, you know we don't need to do anything really special. We don't need to be doing anything uh, really uh, uh, extreme. Uh, but coming back to that fundamental uh, right view, right effort, right mindfulness, and it, it's uh, uh, it's how we. Um, keep keep nourishing or nurturing the practice and keep returning to that training um, and, and again it's it's uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not anything abstruse or esoteric, relinquishing the five hindrances, establishing oneself in the four foundations of mindfulness, and cultivation of the seven, seven factors of awakening. And those, <clears throat> especially as we say taking on periods of meditation, although really at, at any point in time of our life, five hindrances, just paying attention to those, to the, those ob, uh, uh, hindrances, obstacles, obstructions, sense desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, um, kind of worry and remorse, skeptical doubt, um, or wavering, wavering of mind. Um, and that uh, recognizing that, and those are just they're very ordinary qualities of mind. But they, uh, the, what the Buddha says is, they they you know, they obscure mindfulness and weaken discernment, weaken our wisdom. Uh, and as long as we keep Buying into supporting, in being entangled in the in the hindrances, then yeah, the mind is not going to be a suitable um, vessel for realization. It's not going to be a suitable tool to get the job done, and so. Um, Paying attention to the you know, relinquishing purification, or or the, at least the bringing into abeyance, at least temporarily get a bit of a break uh, from, <laughs> from these hindrances. Uh, and, uh, and Buddha, one of the images that the Buddha gives is is of um, of gold in that. Gold, when it is mixed with other metals, then uh, it's just not not uh, it's not pliable. It's not malleable. It's not luminous. Uh, and there's you know, beautiful imagery that the Buddha uses, and uh, and and see you know, what are the you know the impurities that that make the, the mind um, not, you know, not pliable, not malleable, not luminous. And just that, and Buddha said, no. You know, copper, tin, lead, iron, um, silver. Uh, and as these are these five different Five different different uh, 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 metals, common metals, 
and they get mixed up with the uh, uh, with gold, and then the gold isn't is not easily worked. It doesn't make ornaments as beautifully. And so, in the same way that the mind is uh, sense desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, remorse and worry, uh, skeptical doubt, wavering, uh, the mind is not. It's not pliable. It's not soft. Uh, it's got rigid, it's not, uh, you know, and, and so that we, you want a kind of a, a, a softness of mind. Um, malleable, you want to, uh, um, it, it wants to be workable, it wants to be um, adaptable uh, and luminous. And you know, the mind, it really does have a quality of brightness when we 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 are mindful and 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 uh, and uh, have a have a steady quality within, we're not entangled in in you know various moods going up and down and bouncing here and there with our views and opinions and our and our kind of the mind going out into the the world seeking distraction or reacting out of fear. Um, there's a yeah, there's a luminosity, a brightness uh, that is is quite well, it's not just capable, it's more what its nature is. And that's sort of the the lawfulness of the Dhamma is that that's what the mind is like uh, when one is able to see clearly and, and direct one's efforts and attention uh, in, in an appropriate way. Um, you know, so these five hindrances, they and cultivation and uh, establishing oneself in the four foundations of mindfulness. It's not, no, again, we're not looking far away to where the Dhamma is. It's, it's the four foundations of body, feeling, mind, mental phenomena. It's not far away. It's, it's right here. Uh, it's t- turning attention or returning attention. Uh, to these fundamentals of experience, uh, and, but being being clear, uh, seeing the seeing the body as the body, uh, seeing the body in and of itself. I mean, those are different w- ways that the uh, uh, say the idiom is used because you know, again, body feeling, mind. <coughs> Mental phenomena, you know, we we read so much into it of of personality or identity, uh, uh, projection of of uh, the world, and and it's a you know, this body is body, feeling as feeling, uh, just in and of itself. It's not how do we bring it back down to its fundamental uh, core. Uh, seven factors of awakening. Again, it's not nothing that we're, 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 we're not uh, uh, familiar with, um, but it's that cultivation of um, mindfulness. Like we chanted the, uh, the uh, uh, Paritas this evening, and, and uh, one of the chants is the, the Boj- Bojanga chant, the, the uh, chant on the seven factors of awakening. Um, and the, because uh, um, it was used as a, for helping, I mean, the Buddha used it himself to, uh, to teach others that, uh, and just reflecting on, on these seven factors of awakening and, 
it's exhilarating enough when it becomes clear that illness would, would fade away. When one returns to one's faculties, uh, so the first quality, mindfulness. Uh, the second quality, uh, investigation of dhammas, reflection on, on dhamma, reflection on the phenomena. The quality of effort. There isn't, you know, the, the effort comes up in all of the, pretty much all of the Buddha's lists of, of essential spiritual qualities. Uh, so that, that uh, having the, putting forth the effort, putting forth energy, um, but of course it being balanced, circling with right view, right mindfulness, right effort. Beti, uh, joy, uh, exhilaration. Um, that that uh, these are qualities that the mind becomes uh, energized, but it also become it doesn't become frazzled or or uh, it's it's you know, there's a, it's part and parcel again. This lawfulness of the dhamma. It says uh, it's the way the dhamma works. Uh, if you're meditating and putting forth effort and and uh, you know getting more and more depressed and well, it's, you've got to step back and reflect. I mean, what uh, what am, what am I missing? What's happening here? What am I getting obsessed with? What am I? How how am I uh, missing the the uh, uh, the miss that relinquishing of the hindrances? Um, because sometimes we can get concentrated, but we can. But the Buddha said, "Yeah, there's wrong concentration as well. You get, you can get concentrated in a way that you just get obsessed with yourself, and it's it's not it's not beautiful. The results." Uh, Basadi is this tranquility, ease. Um, but it's going to certainly get settled you know, so, and then moves into samadhi, um, composure, settledness of mind, equanimity. Um, equanimity is not indifference, so equanimity is kind of an even, it's equanimity, but it's in the sense of being even, balanced, um, not shaken. So that these seven factors of awakening, are, we cultivate them, uh, they need to be developed. Um, but it's, it's in conjunction with <coughs> uh, these other, you know, other aspects of the, of the path, uh, that you know, uh, relinquishing of the hindrances. Uh, Continuity of mindfulness and and uh, awareness of a full knowing. Uh, this, this as as the uh, so many of the say the forest teachers of the northeast. Uh, this is the Buddha being a practice. You know, sort of returning to the one who knows is coming back to this quality of awareness and mindfulness. Uh, it's our it's our nourishing root for our our practice. So these are some reflections on the Dhamma tonight and just you know, just going over that uh, that 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 theme or that phrase, the lawfulness of the Dhamma, uh, and to uh, delight in that, that that reality, that truth, uh, that that uh, uh, yeah, the Dhamma is there to 
kind of support us. The practice is, 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 is here to give us the opportunity to experience the fruits of it, to offer that reflection to you.